Welcome to Mr. Money. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, we show you how to make cartoon animations using only CapCut. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started creating your animation in CapCut. So the first thing that you will need are vector images. This is because these images will be of a high quality that you can animate later on in CapCut. You will also have the ability to use layers of your image to create a very sharp animation. Vector images also have a higher quality when zoomed in on than a normal high res HD picture. So let's find some vector images right now. There are a few places that you can search online to find your vector images for your animation. Vectezy is one of these. So you can open up Vectezy and of course use the search filters to find yourself some vector images. You also have Pixabay. Pixabay have a variety of user generated vector images that you can use for your animation. Again, go into Pixabay and select vectors from the search filters and begin to make that search. Or you can use what we're going to use in this video, and that is going to be free pick. This is absolutely brilliant to find some vector images that you can edit before entering into CapCut. So let's have a look at what's currently available. And also I'll give you some search terms to make it easier for you to find background images and character images for your story, because those character images are going to be very important towards your animation as it will give you different poses and facial expressions for your character so that it can convey the message or emotion of your story. If you have a story in mind, for example, boy trying to find a dog, or the lost dog trying to find its way home, that is a way to have a starting point and give you an idea of what you should be searching, as it will give you an idea of a scene, for example, which background you should search, where it is, is it in the city, is it in a farm, is it on a lake, where is your animation taking place? Do you have multiple scenes, are there multiple places? So maybe you're at the city, then the lake, then somewhere else. This is all very important for the search that we're going to make. So let's first make a search for our characters. Let me show you what you should be searching for when looking for those vector character images. Right here under assets, select that drop down, then select vectors. Right here is going to be a really important search that you want to make. You want to search for sprite or sprite sheets. This will give you a variety of character poses that you can use for your animation. So let's search for sprite to begin with to show you what populates in the search. Remember, if you know who your character is in your story already, you could search for that as well. For example, sprite and then dog if your character is a dog or maybe a walking human looking dog because maybe you are creating an animation for kids but right here we're going to search for sprites let me show you what turns up in the search results when that's what you search for as you can see there are a variety of animation assets that are pre-animated that you can use for example right here an explosion you have the closed ember and then it opens up and becomes a mushroom cloud that's one example of an animation that you can layer up and of course animate in CapCut. But let's keep searching to show you just a little bit more of what we mean here by sprites. Here is a character who is walking and you have each frame of the character walking right here. But we have that all important icon in the top left hand corner which means premium content not included in your plan. So because we're using the free version of FreePick, let's first filter by the type of assets that we're looking at. So the license here on the left hand side is what you want to pay attention to. You have free and you have premium. Select free and then we can search for vector images that we can use and download for free right now. That's a lot better when you're looking for your animated character. You can also use sprite sheet. So we search for sprites. Let's search for sprite sheet or sheets. I'm going to go for sprite sheet and also spell it correctly. I wasn't looking at the screen for a second. Sprite sheets is also going to give you another search result. A lot of them looking similar first for the uh, first search results here. But as you can see, you have some characters that you can use already and you want to go to the next page. There are 13 pages here available. Remember, there are those other sources where you can find some more vector images that you can use towards your animation. Right here, we found a skateboard kid. Let's select this. You can also have a look at other things that the creator has also uploaded. Right here, this has been uploaded by FreePick themselves. So going into, of course, that creator, it's going to give you quite a lot of different animations that you can find as this has been provided by the website themselves. 
So that's not a good example of when you're clicking into an artist's page to find more assets that you can use. But if you want to use this animation, of course, you can always select that download. And then of course we have that free download attribution sometimes required and you can download it right now. Not only that, but you also have a view similar. So if you found an animated style of a character that you like, you can always select the view similar and then you will be able to find similar animations as opposed to looking through a creator. You can also see how many similar images have been found. Right here we have over 1.76 million similar images that you can use right now. So check out all of these images that you can use for your animations right now. It's going to take you quite a while to search through, of course, 1.76 million views of images that you can use. But of course, looking through, you'll be able to find a character that you can use in your animation for free. Remember, there are also different file types that you can select from here as well. Here I found a character with different walking poses and I'm going to use this character in our animation. By selecting download, we can download that imagery right now and we can use those variety of walking poses with this character. What's brilliant about this is this is uploaded by a user. So if we go to the users page, like I mentioned earlier on, you can find possibly a similar art style and maybe a similar character by going through the images that have been provided. Next, you want to find your background. So of course, this is going to be where your characters are, where the scene is, where things are taking place. So once you have your idea, of course, make sure you have the right filters in your search. Instead of searching for authors, you want to search for those vectors. And then the search that you want to make, now see how it also says authors right there. What might be a good idea is to click the free pick icon, it will take you back to the normal page, and then you can select those vectors. Once you've done that, you want to search for vector backgrounds. By searching for vector backgrounds, you will see something similar to this. And of course, you will also have those premium vector backgrounds. But this isn't something that you would really use for the type of animation that we're creating. Let's search for vector backgrounds and then add an additional search term. So this is extremely important because your scene is going to be very specific to your animation. If you're creating an animation inside of a skate park, for example, you want to type vector backgrounds skate park. And as you will see, you will have a variety of vector images that you can use right now. And these images you can use for your vector animation that you are going to create in CapCut. Finding the right one for your scene is going to take you quite a while and remember to use those filters and it's just a case of searching and finding. So once you search for the scene that you want, you can then use this. Of course, you can also download a Photoshop document version of these images if you are going to use Photoshop to edit the layers of your animation because a vector image will give you layers that you can edit and then use in CapCut later on. And remember to look at that download file type by selecting the drop down here and you have two different versions of file types, EPS and JPEG. So most of you may be asking at this point, what is an EPS file? This is a file image that you can edit the layers of. That's why we're using these vector images. So we can edit the layers and then use that as a part of our animation that we are going to create in CapCut. By taking away some layers or moving those layers, scaling them and more, making them bigger and smaller, moving them around on the page, you can create a moving animation or put your characters behind other layers. So for example, you can hide your character behind a tree if you have a tree as a layer in your image. There are a variety of software that you can use to edit these images beforehand. For example, Adobe Reader, EPS Viewer, and a free software that you can use on Windows or Mac, GIMP, which is a Photoshop alternative that you can download on your Windows or Mac device right now. This I recommend for those of you who are new to this type of picture editing that don't have access to the Adobe Suite or Adobe Illustrator. You can use Adobe Illustrator. You can also use another software called PhotoP, which is available online. And you can edit using PhotoP online entirely free. The difference is that PhotoP, you will have to select the layers individually, as opposed to Adobe Illustrator, which is built for vector image editing alone. And you can literally double click each layer quite easily to either move them around or do what you want with them towards your animation. Of course, you're creating each frame of your animation and then putting it into CapCut later on. 
Inkscape is another one that you can use. So to recap, for this next step, you will either need to use Inkscape, which you can use online, GIMP, which you can download to your device entirely for free, you can use it for free, Adobe Illustrator, which is a part of the Adobe Suite, or Photop, which you can use again online. And Photop is free to use. This will give you the ability to edit the layers. And that's what we're going to do next. For that step, I'm going to be using Adobe Illustrator. It's also important to mention that on FreePick, you will have three download limits for your daily free downloads. In order to get more downloads, you need to sign up for FreePick in order to get those 10 downloads per day, and it's entirely free. So sign up for those additional downloads when you're looking for your assets for your animations. It's also valid to mention that of course you can use Photoshop for the next step as well. Remember, when downloading your vector images from FreePick, you have those two different file formats. As you can see right here, the EPS, this is where you're going to edit the layers or have the ability to edit the layers with your picture editing. We're going to use Photop for our picture editing. And of course, that JPEG is going to keep everything static. You won't be able to remove anything from the background, rescale, or put your characters behind anything in the image. So having that EPS extracting it onto your device using either the extraction file or if you're on a Mac device using a third party extractor because it will be given to you in a zip folder. So I'm gonna go for EPS here, downloading this one, and then we'll move on to Photop to show you how you can do this online right now entirely free in the next step before we get into CapCut. So let's import the file into Photop. First go to file and then from here you can select open. I'm going to find the file that I want to use. It's right here, outdoor activities. And this will open up the file format right here. So this is the case of maybe using your click to select different characters and elements and you can either delete. You can also select multiple elements at one time and delete them. For example, if we hold the shift button, we can select more than one element, hit delete and get rid of that layer. We also have been given some characters here that we could edit, just to let you know that there are sometimes characters that you can use for your animation in the background image that has been provided. What's also a good idea is going through the layers on the left hand side and when you make a selection, you can find that layer and you can delete it like so. You can select multiple layers by holding the shift button, clicking once, clicking for a second time, and then looking at the screen to see what's being selected. Right here, we have a lot of the character, so we know that these paths or layers are of this character. We can then drag that into the bin. Or if you don't have the ability to drag, you can then delete. Make sure you have the correct layer selected beforehand. It's always good to double check. What I advise you do is if you've removed an entire group, select the folder and remove it to save yourself from confusion. Using the drop down is incredibly helpful but make sure that you're not deleting any groups that you currently have on your screen. You can also identify groups by getting rid of the eye icon right here to help you identify exactly what's on screen. Remember, you can zoom in and out of your image to help you when you're making your selections. As I said, this gives you more control over the background, but with much simpler vectors, you'll be able to do a lot more like making lights turn on and off by selecting, for example, if this was a lit window, selecting it, changing one color of the window element, and then changing it back. And you can export those individual images so that you can use them in your animation frame by frame. For example, if there was a sun anywhere in this scene, you could delete the sun or move the sun on screen frame by frame. But for now, let's hit export. As I like the background as what it is right now, it's setting the scene for what I want to do later on in CapCut. Select file and then export as a PNG file. Or alternatively, you can actually go for an MP4. So in the next step, we are going to create the frames for our animated character. Go up to file and then in file select new. Here we're going to go for a similar resolution for a full screen video. In this example, let's go for 1280 by 720. The most important part is right over here to the left where it says background. At the moment we have a white background. You want to select the drop down here and select transparent. Create this 720p transparent canvas. 
So from here, we're going to import our character. Quick note, if you lose track of your layers at any time, you can always select layers from the top right here and the layers will appear on screen. In the next step, we're going to import our character by selecting file, open, finding the extracted file, which is right here, the EPS file. We're going to import that and we have our character. But this is really important right here. Now we're inside of the layers. You can see you have background and objects. I'm just going to select background right here and I'm going to delete it entirely as we don't need that. So we have a transparent background for our images. I've also created a separate canvas just in case you want to go for a 720p. And with the same technique we've used on the earlier background, you can make things disappear and reappear to see which elements the groups are. So you know that what remains is what you're looking for. There's the groups here. These elements are the lines we do not need. So let's delete those lines. So now we only have our characters remaining. You could theoretically export them all one by one and then use them as you see fit, or you can scale each group. You can also change things on the character by editing its colors and more. If you're struggling to select your character, here's some advice. So for here, we have a very complex animated character. It's the only thing that's visible in the scene right now because we've used a technique to make everything else non-visible. So we know that everything in this folder is this character. So if we open this folder, select it, scroll down to everything else that should still be visible and then press shift, make a second selection. We now have all of the character selected, which we can move around on screen and also edit. Not to mention you can also copy. So if we hit control and C, move to the other project and hit control and V, you can see that now our character is available in a 720p canvas. And you can do these one by one in order to use them for your animation. As the only thing that will be available is that character. You will also have control of individual limbs and more. Use this for your animation to create each individual frame for your movement. Another thing that you can do that I recommend is when you're selecting an entire character and maybe removing some elements and more for your frame by frame animation. Right now we just make the entire selection. You can actually move it into the center of the page. So right here, our character is going to be in the center of the page. So we know that when we're going to use another character that is currently invisible, if we want the animation to be still in the correct position, we can now make that selection and move it accordingly. So right now, what we can do is we can make our second selection of the second group. So first, let's remove the drop down of that group. Now we need this group, make that selection, holding the first selection and then pressing shift on the end. And now we can move him into position. So we know that the character is going to be exported in the correct position, or you can make some changes to different parts of the element that you want. In this case, I'm going to move him over the top of the other character using some of the elements as a point of position. So for me, I'm using the Thundershock or electric logo on his t-shirt. Now the character is in the correct position for me to create a decent animation right there. We don't want him to have four arms, so we're gonna export each element at a time. So this is the current element that we need to export. And you can see the other animation underneath. You can also delete groups and undo that deletion with control and Z. So once you have everything in position, you can actually remove to export the only element that you need for that frame. Export them one at a time, and then you have your animation ready for the CapCut edit. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the layers that I do not need by holding shift, making that selection, hitting delete, and I'm gonna export the first frame. by going to file, export as PNG. I'm also going to name the file skate frame one. So right here where it says the name, we're going to go skate frame one and do this for each individual image for your animated character. Of course, you can change things like getting rid of different elements or changing the colors as you will have full control over your animated character in that way. For example, right here, if I wanted to change the color of this, I now can. Once you've exported that frame, of course, you can always bring things back by pressing Ctrl and Z, and all of your layers have now returned, ready to do the same.
in this example, because I've already used the first frame, I'm now going to get rid of it so it doesn't remain. And then it's time to do the rest. Remember, you can also use the other canvas in order to do the same. Or alternatively, you can put your character in the scene. So with your character selected by pressing Ctrl and C, and then going, of course, to your background, if you wish, you could place him on the background in these layers. You might want to change the layer order and you already know that this is the group that you've just imported. So you can change the order of the layers in order to place him in different places in the scene. So to show you more depth, we're using the previous frame as an indicator of where the character should be moving to next. I've also rearranged the layers just by dragging. So for example, if I put this here, then it will change the layer right there. It's actually got rid of that layer. So I'm just going to undo with Control and Z because it didn't place it in the correct position. So for example, if we go ahead of it, you can see that it's now going to be in the wrong place. I've rearranged the layers so I know what should be next. This is the next movement. So I want to put this movement in the correct place. I'm going to open up the layers make the shift selection and then move it into the position to make my animation a lot easier later on. Also making sure that I'm inside the right one. So it needs to be this one that I need to move right here. Go to the edge of all of the paths, move it into position as we're now moving down, but I want to be slightly up from where the original skater was because I want to show that the skateboard is moving and not so much the character himself. Right now, the character will be in the air. I've just made the movement right here. So I can now get rid of the previous frame by hitting delete on that group and now export this as skate frame eight. That rhymes. So export as PNG skate frame eight. And you get the idea because we're now about to do the next frame right here, making sure that we're kind of in the same position. We're just gonna do the same thing again by making the selection of everything that's inside of that group holding that shift, making that selection so I can move him into a better position to make everything a lot easier later on. His arms are now going into position, getting ready to land. You can also have a look at the wheels as that will give you an indicator of where your character should potentially be if you're doing the skate character like I am. If you need to zoom in and out of your canvas, press Control and the minus button to zoom out or Control and the plus button to zoom in. I now have our new frame selected so I know which one to delete makes things a lot easier. You can also use that eye icon to make things disappear. This is going to be skate frame nine. There are also the other groups. Now only one frame left after the one I'm about to export. 10 frames. What you can then do is you can take your background image, add it to the canvas of your video. So as you can see, we're just adding it to the canvas of the video right now. It's loading. It is now available. We can rescale. But those elements, those individual elements, you could take from Photop and you could use those individual elements to scale them and use them individually on top of your video footage. In this case, because we used a quite complex vector image, I've left everything because each individual leaf was an element of the image. So if you had something like, again, a sunset, you could change the scale of the sun and use that individual element as a opposed to a flat, what would necessarily be a JPEG. If I take the first frame of the skater, I can then add him into the shot using layers. Because we use that transparent background with our character, our character is now available. So we could use this to position our skater accordingly and add him to the shot. Right now, he could be on top of this half pipe, for example, or he could be on the ground. So for this next step, you will need keyframes. So in order to use the keyframes on your CapCut online right now is by selecting the first frame right here. So we have the first frame of the character. And then in the right hand side, you want to open up the fix sidebar. This is going to give you more tools that are currently available. Scroll down here and you will see transform. This is where the position is going to take place by selecting add keyframe. In the position, you've now just created a keyframe for that movement, which again, you can then move to another part of the frame right here, move it to the next position right here. And as you can see, it's creating a keyframe for that movement, which is going to take place for that period of time. By pressing play, you can now see that our skater is moving. Of course, we want to make a different movement here. So what you can do is you can get the second frame, just using this as an example, put it on top as a layer, when it's in position, you want to find that keyframe, you know the position's right here, and we can copy the keyframe position by pressing copy on the X axis, pasting it, and doing the same for the Y axis. 
So we now know that this is going to be the same position of our character. But you can also zoom in to have a look at those skate wheels to see that if everything is in the correct position because we're using an element that has been created in a different software. So occasionally some of those positions might be slightly off, but we try to put them as close as possible using the picture editing software PhotoP. So from this position, you could create the second keyframe. Again, selecting keyframe on position. And then if you wanted to speed it up, then you could in this position right here. You can also make a split in this position by clicking on the playhead, hitting delete. And then you have something that looks a little bit like this. So you want to make sure the split is in the correct position. We're doing a really slow animation here just to show you exactly how this works. If this was to speed up, you would see a really smooth animation right there. But we're doing this very slow and as you can see, we've skipped a few frames for that movement. You can also take advantage of the layers of the background to create an even better animation. When you're happy with your results, so of course speeding this up in this case would be a lot better and create a much smoother animation as you can see. What you can guarantee when you're watching tutorials right here on Mr. Money is we're going to give you an up-to-date look on how you can do things like this for free. Right now, you've just learned how to create an animation using vector images in CapCut. And we've shown you how you can create your keyframes right now in CapCut as some of these features have been updated with a new interface and more that you can see right here using the web version of CapCut. If you've enjoyed this tutorial on how you can create an animation in CapCut entirely free using these vector images then don't forget to give us that all important thumbs up and subscribe right here to Mr Money. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.